Greetings and welcome to Temple Baptist Church in Poplar Bluff, Missouri. As we continue to travel through the pages of the book of Proverbs, Solomon's wisdom to his children, to his son, to us, we come to Proverbs chapter 3, beginning in verse 5. And listen to what the passage says. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. That word trust literally means to lie down, helpless, and face down. There's the word trust, to lie down, completely helpless, face down, as a waiting servant is waiting for his master's next command. In other words, I have nothing else to do until my master comes and tells me the next move that I need to make. Trust in the Lord. Too often we feel like we can trust in our own wisdom, we can trust in our own ability, we can trust in our own knowledge, but we will let ourselves down. Sometimes we think we can trust in someone else's wisdom or their knowledge, but they will let us down as well. But there's one who will never let us down, and that is the Lord. That's God. And so it says to trust in the Lord, to be helpless in ourselves, and to be waiting on our Master, the Lord, our Master God, our Master, the Lord Jesus Christ, to give us the next step in which we are to take. Sometimes we are half-hearted in following after the Lord. Lord, we will do what you want us to do after we're finished doing what we want to do. Lord, we will uh, look into your passage of Scripture and we will read your Word when we're finished with everything else that we're going to do that day. Then, Lord, if there's any time left over, then we will have a time of Scripture. We'll learn from you. We'll pray, Lord, when we don't have anything else to do. Then we'll pray. When we've tried everything else and it's failed, Lord, then we may come to the place where we, where we pray and trust that you will lead us out of the situation that we're in that we need an exit from. That's not what the Bible tells us to do, but notice what the passage says. Trust in the Lord with all your heart, not just that which is left over, not just that which we think, okay, we can do without this. We'll give him this little tiny portion, but literally to trust in the Lord, to lie down, to be totally helpless, not to know which way to go until God directs us in that way to go. What do you want me to do, Lord, next? What do you, Lord, want me to do today? Oftentimes, I confess that I have to remind myself, Steve, slow down. I'll start a day, I'll have this on my list, I'll have that on my list, and I like to be able to check those things off of my list. And sometimes I get so engaged with my schedule that I'm just running hither, thither, and yon. I am just anxious about, oh, I've got to get this done so I can get the next thing done, the next thing. And sometimes I miss some of the most important engagements that God has for me between my step number one and my step number two. If we will just slow down, and if instead of directing our own day, if we'll just ask the Lord, Lord, direct our path today. And that's the idea of trusting in the Lord with all our heart. He goes on to say, and lean not on your own understanding. I picture when I read that line in this passage of Scripture, I, I picture the idea of taking an old dead twig needing help to hold yourself up and leaning over on the twig, but it's so dead that it, it breaks, it snaps, and there we are falling on the ground. And that's the idea of trying to lean or trying to trust on our own understanding. We can't see the tomorrow that God can see. We can't see over the mountain that God can see. We can't see around the curve that God can see. But God can see it. He knows our end from our beginning and our beginning from our end. And so He knows all about us. And so we should not lean. We should not trust on our own understanding because those things are going to let us down. But then He says, in all your ways, acknowledge Him. And that word acknowledge means to literally recognize the importance of something. And the idea is here to recognize the importance of God, to recognize the importance of God's direction, His leadership in our lives. And so here we are in all our ways to acknowledge Him. And then the promise is, and He shall direct your paths. My wife and I, many years ago, before we ever had children, we lived in Fort Worth, Texas. And I remember she wanted to put a little culture in my life. And so she took me to 
uh, the Fort Worth Chamber Orchestra. And I remember as they began to tune their instruments and what a horrible sound it was. Everybody doing their own thing, everybody playing their own notes, uh, not in harmony, not in tune, not in unison. It was an absolutely horrible sound. And I thought, if this is culture, I can do without it. And then the conductor, the director got up and he tapped his baton on his platform and all of the, scene, all of the, the players came in contact with his eyes, watched his baton, watched his leadership, his conducting, his directing. And as he began to lift up the baton and his other hand, you heard the most beautiful sounds. No longer were they doing their own thing, but they had come into unison. They had come into uh, playing what the conductor was leading them to play and doing it in his time. And that changed chaos into something beautiful. We can be doing our own thing, thinking that we know best for our lives, and we can find absolute chaos. But if we would realize that God is the director, God is the conductor, He has the master plan, and if we will just watch His cue, if we will just look for His direction in our lives and follow that direction, He can take the chaos of our lives and cause it to be something beautiful. Are you living in the midst of chaos? doesn't have to be that way. Lean not on your own understanding, but in all your ways acknowledge God. Realize that He has the plan and He shall direct your paths into something beautiful. Father, thank you for your love over us. Thank you for your sovereignty in our lives. Thank you that every day you want to communicate with us. And Lord, help us more every day to stop doing it our own way, to quit trying to figure out the solution to our own problems, but to just yield our lives to your leadership, your direction in our lives. And may we watch astoundedly as we take the chaos, yield it to you, and watch you cause something beautiful to come out of that chaos. Encourage someone with your words today. We ask in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Thank you for joining us today. Have a great day in the Lord.